Good Sunday morning, everybody. June 23rd, I'm Chris Allen here on the Sam Channel. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X is where you can find it. And it's all sponsored by Ace Hardware Marketplace. So I'm live at 6.30, not make it 6.40 on this Sunday morning. Just so if you're watching later this morning, you'll know what time I put all this together. Uh, it's a It's a nice day to start. It's later that we might get some rain, maybe some thunderstorms, and maybe even some strong to severe weather. It's possible. So I'm going to highlight that today. We start with the Plano cam, and you can see as of 640 this morning, skies are mainly clear. I do see a few clouds approaching from the west, actually northwest because we've got some activity to show on radar here in just a moment. Here's a look at those same clouds approaching from the northwest on the uh, downtown live cam from AAA Systems and uh, Reservoir Hill. Looking down on the city of Bowling Green, a good start, but clouds are going to thicken up ahead of this system, and we're going to see the chance of rain and thunderstorms. It'll be nice to get some rain in here because it's just been really dry lately uh, and hot and humid. And so we're going to get a break from that uh, this afternoon and evening as that system comes in. It's a, it's really technically a cold front, but it's more of a cool front. It's not really going to cool us down that much, but it will bring us the rain temporarily We'll get a little cool down from it, but then we're going to go right back uh, into the 90s tomorrow. So it's not not really a, something that's going to come in and really make a big difference. Uh, and I, I think we'll get, you know, maybe a quarter inch of rain out of this and some of those stronger thunderstorms. But there's also the threat that we could see a few areas get a damaging wind threat. There's a tornado threat is just, you know, almost non-existent. Uh, but, uh, this would be more of a damaging wind threat. Well, let me just show you, let me just show you, let me pull that up right here right now. So you can see what's going on as far as the, uh, the threat. There it is. Okay. So as you see this, uh, this is for mainly this afternoon and early evening. Anytime, say, after uh, 1 o'clock, 2, maybe, till about 5 or 6 o'clock this evening, that would be the window of opportunity to see the stronger storms. We're in a level 1 marginal risk, okay? So that's, as you see on the scale down here, that uh, dark green marginal risk level 1. So low end threat of severe weather from Bowling Green West. From just a little east of Bowling Green into central and eastern, northeastern Kentucky, that is a level two slight risk, slightly higher risk of seeing severe weather in that particular area. The tornado threat is even there very small, but Damaging winds and large hail, that's more of the threat that we're going to see east of us. So along Interstate 75 and 64, those are the main threat areas and parts of the, uh, you know, the hills and valleys over in eastern Kentucky. So again, all of this is for this afternoon and this evening, not this morning. We'll have a few showers, I think, come in this morning ahead of the disturbance but the actual cold could fire up another line of showers and thunderstorms later this afternoon and this evening. And those are the ones that could possibly become severe. So we'll be watching it. Of course, it's been a while since we've, you know, had the, uh, any kind of threat of severe weather, but it's been a while too, since we've had any rain uh, or anything like this thunderstorms, you know, but, it's not going to make a huge difference in our weather, uh, but it will help. 
it will certainly help, uh, bring down, uh, some of the heat and humidity temporarily, and also give us a nice drink of water on our lawns and on our plants and on our crops. Uh, yeah, it's going to help with that. Here's a look at radar to show you how it's progressing and moving in. Uh, here we are Bowling Green. Uh, right now the showers are moving into places like Paoli, Indiana, uh, Evansville, down toward, uh, Owensboro, starting to get the rain. Uh, then on down to, uh, almost to Paducah and you can see it. It's the tail end of this is starting to come together. It's not very organized right now, but as we get more sunlight, uh, then all of this will start popping into parts of Arkansas as well. So there's some lightning strikes in here, but nothing that's serious, nothing that's severe. This is just a nice band of rain and you can see it's moving off to the east and southeast so in the next several hours that's going to move in and bring us our chance of rain uh the satellite view showing uh how the cloud structure is coming together here we're starting to see some of those uh, clouds moving into bowling green and then the skies will thicken up turn cloudy and then we'll see our turn at getting some of the showers a little bit later on so yeah, it's going to be helpful to get this about a 10th to a quarter inch of rain. That's better than nothing that we have seen. Nothing is what we've been getting lately. <laughs> so it's going to be much, much better. Uh, but it's not going to have a lasting effect, nor is this cold front going to cool us down. any. It's just going to be a temporary thing, but I do see better chances of rain coming which I'll show you in a moment. Here's a look at the Kentucky Mesonet network this morning and all the sensors across the state. And you can see that we are well into the mid seventies this morning. Some locations west of us, even in the upper seventies, already close to 80 just before the rain begins to move in. Let me turn that radar on so you can see. Yeah. So there's rain starting to happen. As you can see right there along the Ohio river, uh, it has not brought down the temperatures yet because it's these places have not felt the full effect of the rain coming in. So temperatures will fall a bit, not much, but a bit as the rain begins to move in. And so, yeah, that's why I say temporarily, it'll be a nice change to uh, get some of that in here, uh, and, uh, temporarily cool us down a bit. Dew points are high again in the uh, upper sixties to low seventies. Uh, as far as the winds coming out of the South five to almost 10 miles per hour coming out of the South and Southwest. So there is a little breeze this morning, which hasn't been around in a while. In fact, here are some of the wind gusts, if you will, not really gusty, but uh, 11, 12, 14, 15. Yeah. The winds do pick up ahead of this line of showers coming in this morning. So yeah, that will help stir up the atmosphere a little bit more. And, um, that should help us out as far as all that goes. So, uh, yeah, here it comes. It's going to be a nice little drink of water or everywhere across Southern Kentucky and some other places too. Let's look at the model blender on this Sunday morning. And, uh, there you go. We've got low nineties for the most part here today, tomorrow, uh, gonna keep things a little lower by a few degrees. Thanks to the shower activity we get today and some leftover clouds in the morning. And then tomorrow afternoon, we're going to heat back up and and you're, there you see Tuesday. Now, Tuesday, there has been a big adjustment in temperature. It's showing 96 there uh, with the blend of models. And remember, this is a blend of some of the major models that we use, computer forecast models, to try to forecast the weather. There has been some adjustment in some of the models to bring down that average high they're showing 96. I'm actually showing 95 
it's still going to be hot and muggy, but not the 98 that we were talking about in the forecast just a few days ago. So we keep it in the mid nineties, low nineties Wednesday. That's going to be the best day for rain. And look what happens the day after that we go to 89, maybe even 88, 89, much better and closer to average 88 is where we should be on average, uh, this time of the year, normal high temperature. But then we jump right back into the mid and upper 90s, Friday and Saturday. Uh, both days look sunny. There may be a late day shower Saturday and then some other shower chances into the beginning of uh, the following week, low to mid 90s, back again. So 90s are in the forecast. Um, they're going to continue to be in the forecast. I don't see any overall big change coming as far as uh, temperatures going back down into the eighties, except just temporarily, you know, maybe for a day or so it, it could happen. But beyond that, mm, I don't see much change going on there. Let's take a look at the maps and you can see that, uh, here comes our system for later this morning and into the afternoon. Uh, we've got a little disturbance. They're showing it here as a dry line that's going to help uh, ramp up some of the thunderstorm activity uh, as it rolls through Indianapolis and parts of Indiana and the Wabash River. And then the, the actual cold front is a little bit back west of that. Here we go to later this morning. Showers approaching as they are already on radar. And then we see in the afternoon, scattered showers and thunderstorms. Notice the severe weather threat uh, further north and east, as I was mentioning. Um, and I think more so it's going to be central and eastern Kentucky that gets the greater threat of any kind of severe weather. In fact, this map points that out uh, this evening. Here comes the cold front. And again, this is not going to be a game changer. It's not going to get cool and less humid the next few days. The, the dew points may relax just a little, go more into the 60s instead of the 70s, but that's really the only difference that we're going to feel uh, as that cold front comes through tomorrow morning. Here's tomorrow afternoon. Uh, well, a little patchy fog in the morning, and then the afternoon, high pressure builds back in. Tail end of this system becomes a warm front just ahead of the next system, the one that's going to affect us for Tuesday night into Wednesday with a much better chance of rain. Here's Tuesday morning, warm front to the west, and there we go. Showers and thunderstorms, pretty good chance. Still running about eh, 60, 70% coverage. That's good. We could get maybe a half inch of rain or more out of that particular system. This is, this is Wednesday. Wednesday evening into Thursday morning, the system begins to move away, but then it stalls just a little because of that ripple of low pressure. We go into Friday. We're between those systems. Here's another piece of energy coming in from the Northwest. Uh, for Saturday afternoon, we could see a few showers, uh, but especially next Sunday, I'm looking at a better chance of that happening. As we get into 4th of July weekend, whichever, whichever way you're going to look at 4th of July weekend, because you know, it's going to be in the middle. <laughs> it's not going to be on a weekend day. Um, like most of us think it should be, there's still this effort out there to get, uh, 4th of July permanently put on the first Saturday in July so that it's always there and people can always, you know, but then there are some people fighting it and it's, you know, how it is. All right. Let's see who's in the chat box this morning. April, Loretta, Terry, Christina, Doc, Mandem 98, Eva, Eric, Tiffany, uh, and Leticia. All right. Good morning to all of you. Uh, there is that threat. Tiffany was asking, 
uh, the storms, are they going to be severe? Uh, at the very beginning, I showed, if you want to back up the reel, uh, they're going to be, there is going to be the possibility of a few storms becoming severe, low end threshold. Um, and that would mean mainly damaging wind threat, tornado threat, um, maybe some hail could be some hail. So, uh, there you go. All right. That's your Sunday morning, uh, update. I'll be watching the weather the rest of the day. Uh, and if we do get any, you know, severe, I, I anticipate maybe a few severe thunderstorm warnings, but it would be because of, uh, the damaging wind threat, or maybe, uh, if somebody gets, starts to see large hail, I don't anticipate tornado warnings or anything. It's not that kind of a system. Um, so I'll be monitoring it, monitor news 40 on your TV. And I suggest that you get the app right there. If you don't have it already, you just, uh, put up, open your, uh, camera on your phone and then put your phone right over that circle with the QR code on it. And that QR code will tell your phone, Hey, here's the link. You can download the news 40 weather app. That way you'll know, you'll know the weather before it knows you. I haven't used that line in a while. I need to bring it back because that's a good line. And it's true. I want you to know the weather before. Well, that's going to be hard to do before I know it. <laughs> that's going to be hard to do. Uh, I want you to know the weather before it knows you. In other words, I want you to be weather aware. And this is the best thing you can have. Uh, aside from a weather radio to know what's coming your way and you'll get lightning detection. If there's lightning within a few miles of you, it'll pop up on your phone. If there's a warning near you, it'll pop up on your phone. So wherever you are, it'll tell you and you can see radar. You can see the forecast. You can see all that stuff right here. You don't need the TV. You don't need really anything else you need, you need this, the app. All right. Have a blessed Sunday and God bless you for watching.